Well, in Preston, it's obvious the state has lost control of their property here along I-5. This area is filled with documented drug camps. And keep in mind, it is right next to Harborview Medical Center, and the medical helicopters come and go right over these encampments. After a large fire and explosions today, the question we're asking is, does the state have a plan to deal with this? We just heard two loud explosive booms coming from the tree line encampment. Traffic camera video shows explosions coming from a raging fire outside Harborview Medical Center in Seattle. I heard a bunch of explosions, like our windows started rattling. Sam McKay is at Harborview for treatment and says the explosions hurled debris from the camp toward the hospital. Walked right out the door and we're stepping on sparks, getting hit by stuff. I mean, there was stuff bouncing off the building and hitting us. Once the smoke cleared, people were back at the site, sifting through the debris of the burned encampment. Just sad and wow. Yeah, normal, almost expected. The fire raises security concerns, not just for the explosions near the hospital, but also because of pervasive drug trafficking that goes on here. Earlier this year, an encampment just across I-5 exploded, and responding officers found stacks of cash, drugs, and a video surveillance system to monitor a drug lab that was made to look like a homeless camp. Today, homeless people near this encampment told me there was a tent here where users could pay admission to go inside and do drugs. We don't know what the answer is, um, but they need to do something. All of this is happening on state property. These encampments, there's no excuse. It is inexcusable to accept Washington with homelessness of this dimension. Governor Jay Inslee had tough talk about cleaning up these encampments earlier this year, but months later, and the state seems to have no handle on clearing encampments with a history of violence and fires. Well, there's straight big flames shooting up. Absolute carnage. Should this setup even be allowed? No, I don't think so. It's, uh, it's not good. One person was injured in the fire today. I confirmed that victim is Casey Kane. He's currently out of jail awaiting trial on charges that he's caused more than $200,000 in damage to buildings here in Seattle with graffiti. As for the encampments here, Washdot says they're going to be out later next week to check on the trees to see if there's a risk of them falling out onto the highway. They say they don't think so for right now, but certainly more developments to come on this encampment situation, and I'll be following it closely. Reporting live in Seattle, Jeremy Harris, Como News. All right. Yeah, I was surprised, Preston, today when we came back to the scene of this fire and explosion, and we found that they were actually rebuilding the tent and had installed what looks like some security cameras to watch over that tent. We're asking state officials what they're going to do about this, but it's clear the state has little to no control over what's happening on their property right next to the region's main hospital. This explosive fire outside of Seattle's main hospital was intentionally started in a targeted attack. That from a law enforcement source with knowledge of the police investigation who confirms investigators think this may have been the result of an ongoing drug feud within encampments on state property in downtown Seattle. Days later and the encampment is already being rebuilt in the same spot. We saw this tent in a video surveillance camera installed on a nearby tree. We also saw people using power tools to expand the makeshift buildings and install fencing into this illegal encampment on state property just feet from the hospital. We do know that fires in these encampments are totally unacceptable. Mayor Bruce Harrell said he's pushing the state to deal with the encampments along I-5 in downtown Seattle. I'm looking for that answer from the state as we speak, so I hope that they give us a, an aggressive timeline and one that works for with the resources that they have. This stretch of I-5 is known for drug trafficking encampments, including this drug lab that erupted in flames earlier this year. Investigators found guns, drugs, and cash and say the tent had a camera so drug dealers could monitor the encampment. King County Council Member Reagan Dunn says the state needs to remove known drug encampments and keep them from coming back. You've got to aggressively enforce our laws and our codes. We've got to make it harder for the drug addicts to come here. And then also, in addition to all of that, you've got to have a safety valve that we can get them into treatment. Anecdotally, at the data, any way you slice it, we have let this place go, our community, the Seattle area, over the last decade. It's not good. Right now, Seattle arson investigators have now taken over the case of the fire. 
You heard the mayor's answer there. Well, we also wanted to get answers from Council Member Kashama Sawant, who represents this area. We asked her today, what is she doing to monitor or help or come up with a plan for this area on state property next to the hospital with these illegal encampments? Her office provided no response. Reporting live in Seattle, Jeremy Harris, Como News. Jeremy, what you're uncovering out there is pretty mind-blowing, to say the least. This is washed up property. What are they telling you? Yeah, so Washington has said all along that their plan is to work with outreach teams, get people into housing and get them out of encampments. But again, that has been going on for months here. I asked them today specifically what they're going to do about this encampment that exploded next to the hospital. They said they are having discussions with their partners to determine what steps will come next. All right, thanks, Jeremy. Well, in Preston, the camp's not only being rebuilt, but as you said, today we saw gas canisters and propane tanks right back in the exact same spot where the explosion happened last week. The city and state have posted notices here saying anything put here can be removed immediately without notice, and so we're asking today why they aren't doing it. Not to be deterred by an explosion, this encampment right outside Seattle's largest hospital is back in business. We saw people coming and going all day and someone who appeared to be passed out inside this tent where there are now five gallon gas cans and a video surveillance system. This is the same camp that blew up last week in what investigators believe was an arson stemming from a drug feud. It happened once, it's going to happen again. People who live and work near the hospital like Everett Savage can't believe it. This is probably the third homeless encampment fire in the last two months. Everybody has gas cans or propane tanks. The site is on state property, but these signs make it clear that it's in a city emphasis zone and say any property here can be seized without prior notice. But that sign means nothing to people who've cut through the fences to set up camp. We wanted to know why isn't the city shutting this down right now? I started by asking Councilmember Kashama Sawant, who represents this area, what she's doing to address this. But her office gave no response. We're working with the state again aggressively to make sure they give us the resources or the assistance to clean up these areas. Mayor Harrell told us he's pushing the state to clean up the area. But we asked today why the city isn't enforcing the law if this is an emphasis zone. The state patrol told me in a statement today this fire was the first they'd heard of problems at the encampment and called these camps a complex problem that they're working on, even if results are slow. For the safety of the hospital, I think it'd be better if they cleaned this up because it's just a, it's a hazard. Someone who was in the hospital at the time of the explosion last week told me they called what's called a code red over the intercom. We asked Harborview if they have any thoughts on the encampment being reestablished here, especially with the gas canisters we saw today and how that fire impacted their operations have not received a response. Reporting live in Seattle, Jeremy Harris, Como News. Yeah, that's right. I just got a copy of the initial police report. It details a drug turf war involving shootings and a bombing right outside of Harborview Medical Center that nearly killed 20 people who were inside of a tent smoking fentanyl. All of this is happening on state property, but neither the state nor the city seem to have any plan to deal with it. Explosions rocked through the encampment in the early morning hours last Friday. Today, a police report says this bombing came after a violent overthrow of a drug empire operating on state property on I-5, directly outside Seattle's largest hospital, Harborview Medical Center. The report says multiple explosive devices were used to blow up a fentanyl tent where there were 20 customers inside. One of those users found a device before it went off and everyone inside the tent scattered right before the explosion. The police report says witnesses said the bombing may have been in retaliation for a recent shooting and possibly connected to the theft of $80,000 in fentanyl. It's a bad cycle and I think that if it's allowed to continue, it's, it's, it's going to continue to get worse. Jim Feuda from Crime Stoppers of Puget Sound says encampments like this are havens for drug trafficking and things here can escalate quickly into violence. I like to use it as kind of a Lord of the Flies uh, um, scenario where there's their own hierarchy infrastructure that, that ends up in these camps. If you thought a bombing at a homeless camp on state property outside the city's main trauma hospital would garner quick action by the city and the state, think again. 
Despite signs saying this encampment can legally be removed immediately without warning, the city has offered no plan in response to the bombings. The state has also been equally quiet, just saying they are working with partners to deal with the encampment, which is in an area of state property that is known for drug trafficking, with police finding guns, cash, and drugs in encampments. I think that they, they need to be clean and the people responsible need to be held accountable. No arrests have been made in this case, but one of the suspects listed in that police report does have a history of an arson conviction. We've been pushing the city because there is a sign at the entrance to this encampment that says anything put in there can be removed immediately with no notice given. We are asking the city and the state why they are not doing it. We'll keep you posted. Reporting live in Seattle, Jeremy Harris, Como News. Jeremy. Yeah, just within the last few hours, crews secured the area with these fences. But in the last hour, we've seen five people break down the fence and go back into the encampment. We just watched a guy just right before we came on walk out of there with a sledgehammer. So it's not stopping these folks from going back in. The state says they had to take emergency action to close this down. We've been asking them why it took so long. An emergency order by the state gave the go-ahead for police and work crews to go in and bring down this homeless encampment near Seattle's Harborview Medical Center. This was the site of a bombing that police reports say involved multiple IEDs set up around a tent where fentanyl users were inside smoking. To have this going on in my backyard, that is so scary. Vicki Young lives next to the encampment and says the explosion rocked her apartment. They sit here and they do their drugs and I got to smell it. And every time something explodes, I had ashes coming in my window. State transportation officials said the explosions and significant criminal activity here created a risk to the hospital and people on I-5, prompting the emergency removal. The state has let camps like this go on for months, citing a lack of housing as a reason for not stepping in sooner. How sad that we've gotten to this place where um, encampments are blowing up. Christine Moreland does outreach in encampments like this and says drugs have taken over. Once you're into that addiction, especially with the fentanyl, super fentanyl as we're calling it these days, how do you get out? It's not okay. We are literally letting people die on the streets out in Seattle, Washington. The camp had its own rules and leaders. Police reports say there was a serving tent where customers could pay admission to come in and get high on fentanyl. A witness told police that bombs were placed around the fentanyl tent and would have killed 20 people if someone hadn't called for everyone to run. Shame on them for letting this happen. Vicki can't believe what was allowed to go on here and hopes this will be a lesson in letting encampments like this go on without intervention. It's the drugs. It's not a homeless problem. It's not a housing problem. It is a drug problem and they need to address the drugs. Social workers were here on scene today working with anybody coming out of the encampment who would accept help. Now, these police report we have explicitly connects this encampment to some of the drug trade that's going on in the streets of downtown Seattle. Crews were not able to get everything cleared out today. We anticipate they will be back tomorrow to continue their works to clear this area out. But we are told that once it's out, they're going to secure it, and we're going to keep our eyes on top of this thing to make sure that this encampment doesn't pop back up after you saw that explosion video. Reporting live in Seattle, Jeremy Harris, Como News. All right, thank yeah, crews hauled out tons of debris today. They've locked down the site, but in the last half hour, we've watched people break back into the encampment. The state called this action extremely rare to shut down this encampment so quickly due to the safety risk it posed. But some are wondering why other encampments with a history of violence and drugs aren't getting the same treatment. This chain link fence now secures an area that up until this week was a free for all. Police reports say the camp along I-5 in downtown Seattle was the site of a drug turf war that ended in an explosion. That's when the state said the threat to public safety was so great, the encampment would be closed and cleared immediately. There's just now all of a sudden emergency orders that they're able to just close the camp down. Well, why couldn't they have done it when we were asking for this to be removed next to our schools? Eli Hosher fought the state about the Ship Canal Bridge camp for months as drugs and gun violence went on right by his kid's school. Bombing, shootings, fires, I mean, all of these things are happening, and those are clearly a threat to the community. While a bombing outside a hospital apparently crossed the line for the state, other camps with trafficking of drugs and stolen goods, even murder, have been allowed to stay. A 66-year-old woman was murdered in the Mercer Street camp in March, yet that camp has grown considerably since then. 
it is a tragedy continuously waiting to happen, and we let them happen, and then action's taken. It's very reactionary. Andrea Suarez runs We Heart Seattle and does homeless outreach. She says drug traffickers choose to set up shop on state land along the freeway. They know that it's hard to get kicked out of there. The state has said camps aren't cleared faster due to lack of housing availability. To do nothing because there's no housing is to leave people there to be preyed on because they're vulnerable to their addiction. But after this explosion and quick action to close the camp. So listen to the community. Eli says this may finally be a wake up call. So you can't let it get that far. You need to figure out a way to see when something is a, is a legitimate threat. Washtot says their crews are going to be back here next week to stabilize that hillside and finish the cleanup. Social workers told me today they were able to talk to 12 people here. Of those 12, four accepted offers of shelter. Police say they're going to be monitoring the site for people who break in, which, as we've seen in the last half hour, has already happened. Reporting live in Seattle, Jeremy Harris, Como News.